Well, I didn't find any treasures, but In today's deep dive, we'll start restoring the keyboard. Well, I didn't find any treasures, but did find a few presents. All of the felts that the keys rest on are <clears throat> soiled and need to be replaced. A heat gun really helps soften the original animal glue that held the old felt in place here on the rest rail. After cleaning the key bed, I noticed quite a few of the front pins that hold the keys were rusty, so they had to be removed and replaced. The replacement pins were just a little loose in the holes, so I added CA glue for a tight fit. Checking the height of each pin with the gauge every time got old, so I made a go-no-go -no -go tool to help speed up the process of installation. Look at that nice new felt. It's always so refreshing to see. I got the rest rail strips cut to length, glued on, and less than a week into the project, I've already got blood on the piano. Next ingredients for this project, sweat and tears. This celluloid label for the playback controls is seen better days. I think I might have a lead on a replacement. More on that later. Here's the underside of the key bed. I replaced all the control tubing that was here removed and cleaned up the linkages and control rods, replaced the control rod bushings, as well as the leather nuts that hold the control rods and linkages in place. The manufacturers originally didn't have a small size metal nuts that could hold tight onto threads, so they used leather. Well, modern leather is processed in a way that it tends to corrode metal, so I use nylon nuts instead. They're a good compromise. Here you can see the slop in the keys. There are felt bushings in the center of the keys that help guide them and keep them aligned vertically. It's especially noticeable in the black keys. There are also bushings in the front of the keys, on the underside. These are worn as well. In fact, on the end notes, for some reason, there's some bushings that are even missing. The cap stands connect the keys to the piano action. I gave them a light polish with steel wool. Since there are so many worn and missing key bushings, I'll remove them and replace them so we have a fresh start. They were originally adhered with hide glue or animal glue, so a hot soldering iron and some water helps me remove them. In the past I've had issues with water staining the wood around the keys, but this time I'm using distilled water.
To install the new bushings, I'll use hot hide or animal glue, just like they did at the factory. The white plastic pieces that I've inserted into the bushing slot are called calls. Not only do they help size the bushing and hold the felt in place, they also give me something to trim against with a razor once the glue is set. Well they turned out pretty good, and using distilled water kept the staining down. It's the little things in life. Rinse and repeat. Time to do the front bushings. Well, that's about 10 hours of work in a 10 minute video. I'd say that's enough for this deep dive. We'll see you on the flip side. That is, in the next episode, we'll take a look at replacing the damaged ivory key tops. Thanks for watching and stay tuned, if you want. No pressure. <laughs>